Okay. The patients you see on the left represent actual patients. The patient top left developed a severe infection after undergoing a liver transplant. Penicillin antibiotics were commenced and blood cultures taken. Tests revealed the presence of a bacterium in the patient's blood, but it was susceptible to all usual antibiotic treatments. His condition continued to deteriorate, however, and after several changes of therapy, tests revealed the bacterium was now resistant to all standard antibiotic treatments. This scenario is increasingly common. All over the world, bacteria are developing resistance to drug therapy, with outbreaks of multidrug resistant bacteria or superbugs now commonplace. This has caused some to suggest we may be entering a post antibiotic era. Fortunately, many of these superbugs remain susceptible to one drug, colistin, which is added to this patient's antibiotic regimen. Within five days, his condition dramatically improved, and within two weeks, no bacteria were found in his blood. Colistin is a very old antibiotic, virtually abandoned for more than 20 years. However, as resistance has rapidly developed to the newer agents that replaced it, it's now increasingly used as an agent of last resort to treat otherwise untreatable infections. Colistin was never subjected to many of the drug therapy uh, procedures required of more <coughs> modern drugs, and we simply don't know how to use it optimally. The first patient was fortunate. Many recent studies have shown that colistin concentrations are often too low to be reliably effective, and this provides the perfect opportunity for resistance to develop. And worryingly, that's exactly what we're starting to see. As colistin causes reversible but severe damage in the kidneys in a large majority of patients, simply in increasing the dose is often not an option. Our lack of understanding of how best to dose colistin is perfectly illustrated by the patient bottom left. This woman was on hemodialysis, contracted an infection with a multi-drug resistant bacterium and received colistin as last line therapy. It was only after she died that concentrations of colistin were found to be extremely low, removed from the blood by hemodialysis. Clearly, the colistin dosage regimen administered to her was not good, but we still don't know how best to dose colistin in patients on hemodialysis. The research undertaken in my PhD seeks to fill in some of these gaps in our knowledge. I've undertaken many of the types of tests performed on more modern antibiotics with the aim of learning how to administer colistin most effectively, maximising bacterial kill while minimising um, resistance. I've investigated such things as the optimal dosage frequency, strateg strategies to predict the extent of bacterial killing and combination therapy against multidrug resistant organisms. So why the empty bed on the right? This awaits a patient sometime in the near future. It could be waiting for you or someone you love whose only treatment option is colistin. Until recently, it would be administered based more on uh, intuition and tradition rather than scientific evidence. This time, I hope that with the knowledge gained through my research, it can be administered in a way that is safe, effective and without resistance developing. Thank you.